going on out there fishing fam race reef here with the dirty hookers and today we're doing another update offshore tackle talk breakdown we just got back from a 1.5 day aboard the highliner i was actually fishing this trip instead of working it was my first fishing trip of the season and we were getting everything on the night bite we also found some kelp patties that produced a few yellows as well and stopped on a handful of schools of bluefin as well throughout the day i'm going to go over everything that you should be bringing on these trips if you're going to go out soon to hopefully enhance your chances at hooking some of these fish if you're going out on a future trip to start things off most of the bluefin are being caught during the night a couple days before us they were finding a lot of the bluefin during the day for our trip we were mostly finding bluefin that wanted to cooperate throughout the night and when you're fishing the night bite you could be catching fish all the way up to possibly 200 plus pounds so if you're going out anytime soon on an overnight all the way up to a two day or longer it's very very important to come out with a hundred pound setup that's capable of handling some of these bigger model fish my setup of choice i bought this rod about four or five years ago when i didn't know anything about knife jig bluefin fishing flatfall fishing so this rod a little too stiff for my likings this is the phoenix black diamond hybrid it's rated 60 to 130 pound test it's a little too stiff in my personal opinion especially if you get into those like 40 to 50 pound models the rod is just a little bit too stiff and wants to stay straight and it's hard to keep a bend in that rod keeping consistent pressure throughout the whole fight but anything that was like 80 pounds and heavier it kind of worked to our benefit I have this rod paired up with Talica 25, it's pulled up with a 100 pound braid connected straight to 130 pound Opsin fluorocarbon. And from there, I tie it straight to the jig. If I had heavy enough of mono at home when I was getting ready for this trip, what I would have done was about 25 feet of maybe 80 or 100 pound monofilament, about 25 feet of that. And then I would tie that to a crimp leader, a bite leader. But since I didn't have mono, I went ahead and ran just like about a six to eight foot liter of Opsin fluorocarbon straight to my jig. And the reason why I don't tie braid straight to a crimp leader, it's gonna help reduce the chance of the swivel winding straight into my tip of my rod. So by having a little bit of a warning, I can feel that knot start coming through the guys and that means my jig is about to come to the surface, slow down, that way it reduces the chance of that happening. And it's very, very important right now for these night bites if you do not have rainbow braid that indicates how far deep you're, you're going, at least have your braid marked out. You can see a little bit of color of orange and black in, inside my spool right now. What I personally did was every 50 feet, I did a black mark about a couple inches long. And then at every 100 feet, I would do about an 18 to 24 inch marked line of different color. Each color indicated a different depth. And it's very, very important to have your line marked out so you know exactly how deep you are because these fish are coming from underneath the bow at various depths all the way throughout the night during the bite. They can be coming in from anywhere from 100 feet to 400 plus feet down. You're gonna wanna be fishing anything from 250 to 350 gram jigs right now. And if there's a little bit more current even up to 400 gram jig a couple weeks back the red with glow stripes and all red back was producing a lot more fish on this trip the, anything with red i noticed still got a lot of bites but something with a little bit less glow was producing a lot more fish so for me i was fishing this what i call a sriracha color it's red with orange belly and it's got a couple and it's got a bunch of white polka dots all over it and all those white dots glow and nothing on the back so what I noticed throughout this trip is the jigs with the least amount of glow was producing the most fish. This jig right here landed five total fish on the boat, anywhere from 50 pounds all the way up to 120, 30 pounds. And this very jig landed five of them. This is the Richwin 270 gram, what I was calling a sriracha pattern. And we fished this until it couldn't be fished any longer. The hooks got snagged up on the rail for a second when bringing one of the fish over and it kind of bent out the jig. We were able to straighten it out, but two of the hooks were bent out pretty bad too. And I didn't have any hooks to replace for it, so it just wasn't fishable anymore. And that's when we stopped fishing it as much. And how I had it rigged up was two assist six aught hooks and one six aught assist hook on the bottom. After that, my buddy Matt was fishing this jig as well, and my buddy Devin was fishing the same jig throughout the whole trip. And this is the same one as you guys saw Jamie caught his 200 plus pound a few weeks back, and this produced some fish as well. Those red colors are still producing a lot of fish, but we also noticed silvery with, a, with minimal glow was producing a lot of bites as well. During the day, we were still stopping on a handful of bluefin schools, 
and also stopped on a lot of kelp patty fish. And if you want to still be fishing like jigs and artificials for bluefin, we're recommending anything from 80 grams to 120 grams throughout the day. Sardine patterns or Katy Perry colors are really, really good for daytime colors in my personal opinion. I really, really like the Katy Perry. Colt snipers, Akana jigs, smaller size flat balls, rich wind style uh, flutter jigs. So we're recommending 80 gram to 120 gram for daytime fishing. Also on kelp patties for yellowtail, Colt sniper style stuff is working as well. And we're even able to get a handful of yellowtail on surface irons as well. I hooked three, landed one on the blue and white Taddy 45. And my buddy Matt hooked a handful of yellowtail on the surface iron, Taddy 40 light and mint, if I remember correctly. Also for the kelp patties, we were getting a lot of bites on 25 to 30 pound fly line. If we're fishing on the kelp patty fly lining for yellowtail, I highly recommend using a J hook. I use a two watt J hook for yellowtail just because the circle hook really doesn't hook the corner of their mouth all that well on yellowtail. So having a live bait J hook really helps hook those fish a little bit better than a circle hook does. And for bluefin fishing, same 25 to 30 pound fly line setup, but for bluefin, we're recommending either a size two to size four circle hook. I use size four Mutu circle hooks. That's been doing pretty well for me over the last couple seasons, fly lining for bluefin. During the daytime, most of our yellowtail were between three to six pounds. There was also a handful of eight to 10 pounders caught throughout this trip as well. And we saw a lot more of like 10 to 15s as well on a single patty. There was plenty of yellowtail that we saw that if they were willing to bite, we would have had limits for the boat, but they just didn't want to cooperate this trip. So it is very, very important to have every setup that you can possibly have rigged and ready for anything that wants to present itself when these fish do want to bite to enhance your chance at catching some of these fish. And lastly, during the daytime, it's also very important to even have a sinker rig set up already rigged up as well. Sometimes those bluefin, when you come on them, they're swimming at like 100 to 300 feet deep and they won't come up on the chum, but you can get them on the sinker rig. We're recommending anything from 50 pound up to 80 pound. I'm all fresh out of 80 pound, unfortunately, after my Cabrilla trip. So we were fishing 50 pound sinker rigs. There was a couple different stops during the day where the captain said that they were deep, try a sinker rig, and we tried it. Just unfortunately, no fish wanted to cooperate. And you can fish that on anything from a 50 pound setup all the way up to your knife jig setup if you want to fish an 80 pound sinker rig. All you gotta do is cut that knife jig off, rig it up for sinker rig fishing, you're good to go. So that's what we're recommending for the daytime fishing. And right around eight o'clock or so, just after the sun goes down completely, we transition right into knife jig fishing. And that's when the bluefin wanted to start playing around again. And you're using, again, if you had a sinker rig tied up, just cut that sinker rig off, put your knife jig back on, start fishing the knife jig. And that was when our bluefin wanted to start cooperating again. The bluefin are moving quite a bit day by day. The first night we were fishing them about 40 miles from the landing. And the second night we were fishing them as far as 70 miles from the landing. So they moved around 30 miles just over the daytime. And that's why we weren't able to find a whole lot of schools during the day, just because they moved so far. But as soon as we found them, we were back on top of them, catching a handful more fish for the last night and started heading home because we had a long journey back home. Overall, it was a really, really fun trip. It was a great first trip of the season for me fishing. Um, stoked to get out there and catch some fish and pull on some fish this early in the season. I'm going to try to do my best to get this video out sometime this week. And big, big news, we finally hit 10,000 subscribers as of yesterday. Super, super pumped about that, guys. Thank you so, so much. Being huge supporters of the channel, this wouldn't be possible without you guys. In honor of this, we're going to be doing a big giveaway. Hoping to get that video out sometime this week, maybe next week. I'm just waiting on a few more do donations to show up so that I can get as many in this video as possible to show you guys what all you're going to be winning and I'll be going over all the rules and what you have to do to enter this giveaway as well. I'll probably be doing one giveaway here on YouTube and one on Instagram. So if you guys have Instagram, you might have two shots to win instead of just one. I really appreciate your guys' continued support over the years. Big, big thank you to every one of you guys for making this possible. And I'm hoping this season is going to be a pretty epic one. And I hope this video helped you guys out a little bit. If you guys have any Tackle Talk recommendations you want to see in the near future, please let us know. We'll either post it either on the Highliners Instagram page or here on this channel to share with everybody as well. So if you have anything you want to see, just leave it in the comments below and we'll make sure to get around to that as soon as possible but i think that's going to do it for this video thank you all for watching please give this video a nice big thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you aren't already and we'll see you all next time Shoot.